Welcome. Good evening. I'm coming on a couple minutes early because in a few minutes I'm going to invite a new author um, and we're going to talk about her books and interview her. So, uh, hope everybody's enjoying their Friday. It's Friday, right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I've been busy, busy myself with some bookish stuff and getting ready for some book signing things, but um, I came across this really sweet gal and um, she's just a delight and she's an avid reader and a brand new author and I wanted to show some love. So uh, join us. I'm going to try and uh, share with um, some friends. See if I can get them to come on. So, if you are a reader uh, or an author, if you like new age books, uh, share with your friends, let them know so we can invite them on. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to see if I can add a guest couple minutes ish don't declare I'm only going to add the author that I'm going to interview tonight so if you guys want to jot down any questions you might have for her in her new book go ahead and do that but I hope you stick around and uh, we're gonna talk uh, books today All right, I'm going to invite author Jeanette T. Queen, and we're going to do a uh, author interview tonight. I hope you guys can hear me okay. I do have ACs running in the background. Good evening. Hello. Am I saying your name correctly, Jeanette Queen? <laughs> Jeanette T. Queen, yes. Yes, awesome. So um, I'm going to read your author bio to introduce you to everybody. I'm glad right, you're able to. Thank you. Right. Um, let's see if I can get you to, if I can expand my. If you go into, I think it's the grid. Yeah, I was going to say, I know it's really <laughs> weird. I yeah, can't yeah. remember how, how you do it. <laughs> it's been a while. Right. I'm still getting to know uh, TikTok-ish. <laughs> the, the realm of TikTok and book talk, but I know it's uh, something we'll... with like you pick the grid in your and your like under guess and you hit grid or something. Oh, okay. It took me forever to figure it out, and then once you do it, it sticks. But I can't remember <laughs> exactly what it was. Now I've got like what six different spots. Yeah. I'm just gonna talk to you <laughs> unless you have some friends that you'd like to invite on. But no, I'm good. I'm, hey, it's all about me. What are we talking about? I'm a Leo. <laughs> you, yeah. All right, so I'm going to read your author bio, and then we're going to talk about your book that you got debuting on August 8th. Congratulations. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we got Jeanette T. Queen. She is a fantasy author who loves to read anything with magic and or romance. Girl, we're, we're kindred spirits, especially those books written by her friends. She grew up in the small town of Boonesboro, Maryland, but now lives with her husband, two children, and four fur babies in the beautiful state of North Carolina. Jeanette is a professional hypnotherapist and life coach. That's a tri that's a trade to brag <laughs> yeah. Uh, which she's not writing. Uh, she is also a food allergy parent who advocates for food allergy, allergy legislation and education. You can keep in touch with Jeanette through her newsletter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Clapper. I don't know what a Clapper is. What is a Clapper? <laughs> it's like, it's like TikTok, but it's kind of, I hate to say the redneck version, but it kind of is. It's like, <laughs> not as advanced but it's getting there but that you do the videos but they're very grassroots like they don't want you using um cap cut or anything like that they just want you like they want very authentic okay. that kind of thing sweet all right okay so you wrote your very first book and it is called uh the last pin dragon book one blood yes. pin dragon series so it's a series yes okay. And this is a, a new adult fantasy book. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
um, you're saying it's kind of got the uh, Excalibur meets, meets modern day Twilight, New Age kind of blend. So if we're in yes. this kind of magic Merlin, Excalibur, Arth, King Arthur, those things, we're going to love this one. mentioned it's, it's more modern day. Um, my character is a dis is a distant relative of King Arthur. He's mentioned he is basically frozen in time somewhere. So we'll find out what happens to him a little later in the series. Mm -hmm. But it's more about Elizabeth and how she is chosen by Excalibur to kind of pick up where he left off. Okay. Okay, sweet. So I'll read the uh, back of the book blurb, and then I'll ask you some author questions. How's that sound? Please, please. All right. So an ancient evil is rising once more. War is coming. The time for the new pin dragon to rise and take over where our author left off is now. Elizabeth has lived a sheltered life, ne never getting too close to anyone. Afraid they would just leave her like everyone else in her life has. Her post-college plan was simple. Take a boring office, office job at a multi-billion dollar company owned by a family friend. Uh, then decide what she wanted to do with the rest of her life. Destiny, however, has other plans. Uh, magic and supernatural beings are the stuff of legends found only in books or on television. Not in real life. Not in her real life. But Elizabeth quickly finds herself at a, at the deep end of a magical war that has been brewing for centuries. A war where she is supposed to be the hero. Problem is, she has no idea why. Uh, she doesn't know about the legendary blood running through her veins or the power and responsibility that comes with her legacy. She's completely clueless in her realities of her very mythical existence and it will take an army of allies to help her stand against the monstrous threat determined to exterminate the line of the twin dragon and from the face of the earth so that is going to be an epic journey for this girl yes so your book is called the last pen dragon book one blood of the pen dragon series so that is going to be a new adult fantasy everybody <laughs> Um, can I ask you what inspired you to become an author? Um, the idea for Elizabeth and her journey has been in my head for well over 20 years. Oh, wow. Um, the funny thing is my aunt has been my first, she was my first fan and she actually kept copies of my first two chapters that I wrote 20 some years ago. So oh, wow. she has read every chapter of this book, whether it made it in this one or not. Yeah. And then life happened and I got, you know, married, had kids, kind of just forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And then I guess when COVID hit, I was home with two kids homeschooling, but I was also going to school myself to be a hypnotherapist. Wow. So I was busy, but I kind of had some time on my hands yeah um, so i kind of toyed with the idea again but then i really didn't think about it seriously until i was in a meditation class learning how to teach meditation and the first seven chapters just popped into my head and wouldn't leave until i wrote them i had to get them out of my head and then once i did seven chapters it's like well i might as well complete the book at this point <laughs> so. yeah that you know i started writing during covid too <laughs> I think it was a good time to start, like when you want to be a writer and you just got busy with life. I think that's a lot of indie authors did. I think that's part of the whole indie author boom right now mm -hmm. is because a lot of us, we were home, we couldn't leave. Yeah. It was the perfect time. It became time, yeah. So uh, your publication path is that you're a self-independently published author. So much. <laughs> and uh, oops. what has been your biggest lesson learned during your publishing experience? Oh my gosh, everything. Like when I first sat down to publish it, I had no clue, no clue what I was getting into. Wow. Um, 
I thought you wrote the book and that was it. You sent it off to a publisher, they loved it and they published it. Yeah. <laughs> I was so naive. Right? <laughs> it is definitely a journey. <laughs> so naive back then. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, today, what is your most difficult chapter that you have written? The last chapter of book one. Uh, okay. Because Oh, well, is it the last chapter? There's a big fight scene that happens. And it was, I knew how I wanted to go, but I wasn't 100% sure how to get it on the paper, you know, get it out of my head. Yes. That was so far. I am 10 chapters into book two right now. So, but still, that was probably my most difficult. That's awesome. Um, which brings me to another question. When this this book, in your first book, congratulations, is going to debut August 8th, where will it be available at? Uh, right now, it's on the ebook is on sale on Amazon for 99 cents, clear through uh, release day. So it will be there. I will have a paperback there. Actually, secret, the paperback's live right now, but I wasn't really announcing that because it was for my ARC readers, <laughs> but it's the live. <laughs> Okay. And I do have it on Ingram Sparks, so I am hoping to try to get it elsewhere too. But it's okay. definitely on the Zon, you know. On the Zon, for sure. Yeah, I will also have an Etsy store that okay. I'm in the process of setting up now. Okay. So you can get signed copies directly through me. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, and you said you were working on book two. Do you have an idea when that is going to be released? My goal is I would like to get done by the end of the year. Okay. That's my goal because I kind of, not the spoiler, but it is, does end on a cliffhanger and I feel bad about it. Okay. <laughs> and my ARC readers are coming at me left and right like, what? So, yeah. and I know what it's like to be stuck on a cliffhanger. So I am trying very trying to get it out as soon as possible so hopefully by the end of the year okay that's awesome how many books in this how many series how many books are you going to have in this series you know um right now there's definitely going to be three i might go as far as five but i wouldn't do more than that okay so between three and five depending on where the story leads me okay perfect <laughs> that's where i'm at three for mine and room to spin off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good start, I think. Um, what has been the biggest reason to celebrate as you went through the steps to publishing your book? What have been the biggest milestones for you? Honestly, I mean, like I said, it was such a learning process. Mm -hmm. Like you, you don't even know what you're getting into. So actually, yeah. Physically holding my book for the first time was probably almost as profound as holding my first child, <laughs> you know, is like, you did it, you, it's, it I was a very it. long process, but it happened. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. I saw that you were holding your book and that is a And the only thing I could say was, wow, that's all I could say. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, this is amazing. Uh, so what do you enjoy most about writing now that you kind of found the recipe for it? Um, I just enjoy seeing where the characters take me because yeah. I'm a pantser. I couldn't plot. Even when I do try to plot it out, it doesn't work out that way. Yeah. They all, all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so I'd love to see where they're taking because I'm so, I'm as surprised as you guys because it's I don't know where it's going. <laughs> I have an idea, but yeah, I think the first book I wrote I was such a prancer that it was just like a whole bunch of words, and I had to revise a lot. So after that, I decided I tried a plot, but it just kind of gives me a direction. That's all it does. Yes. <laughs> doesn't give me any kind of certainty. <laughs> kind of like an outline. You give yourself an outline and, you know, you try to, you know. Uh, yeah, that's what I think. Um, what are five things that make you happy? Hmm. 
that's a good question. I may have to steal that one. <laughs> um, my kids, I, my kids make me happy. Uh, I enjoy writing. I love reading. Uh, I enjoy cooking. And I enjoy talking to fellow authors on this app that I've met and got to know. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Uh, technology now that it just makes that a possibility. You just sit in our oh. living room, talk to My book would still be in a word draft had I not found this app. Right? I didn't find this app until after I had some major baby author mistakes. <laughs> But people are in general pretty good, pretty kind people. So I, I, yes. I like. If picking a favorite character would be like picking a favorite child, which character seems to be the most demanding of your attention and details as a writer? Uh, Riker, because he wasn't even supposed to be in the book. I had a first draft already done. I had. Elizabeth's love interest in mind. I had only planned to have one love interest and mm -hmm. Riker came to me in a dream and was very persistent and I had to put him in there. Now, most people love him. I've had like one person that's definitely team Shane, but most people seem to be team Riker. Okay. That's sweet. Uh... Who are some book authors that you would recommend as a reader? Oh my God, there's so many. <laughs> um, K.A. Masterson, mm -hmm. E.M. Leander, uh, Rebecca F. Kenny, mm -hmm. D.L. Ledford, Irene Barr. Like there's just, there's so you many. Them all down. Uh, so you're writing. You. <laughs> you're writing. Um, Fantasy, is mm -hmm. it considered high fantasy romance or contemporary romance for the young adult? New I, I, I guess, what is it? Um, urban fantasy maybe, where it's not epic. I mean, there is epic elements of it, but it's based in modern times. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be super epic because those books tend to be like this thick. <laughs> I wanted it to be kind of a light, easy, fun fantasy read that you'll, you won't spend weeks trying to get through it. You'll enjoy the story. You'll love the characters and be, you know, wanting to move on to the next in the series without it being too heavy. So I don't know if I call it light, fluffy fantasy. <laughs> you can call it that. That's, that's great. You can tape into the pages for the night. So it's, it's fairly a, a short, shortest read. You can get through it in a day or two. I mean, it's not super thick. Okay. I mean, a couple depending on how fast of a reader you are, yeah. a couple of days. How much depends on how much time you have. I'm looking forward to reading. I pre-ordered it. It's in my alley. I I like young adult and I like spicy romance. Those are I do too. Fantasy because I like to escape reality when I'm reading. So. Um, I'm so excited that I came across you, you're a new author, and um, we all get to chat about your book coming out. Uh, did you design the cover? Because it's pretty cool. I did not. I worked with um, Rose from Melti Melting Rose Design, who is phenomenal. Like, she even, like, I gave her a couple of font ideas, and she actually hand drew the fonts for me for the title. Oh, that's awesome. Like yeah. in the back, she just managed to bring my vision to life much better than even I anticipated. Like she's, and she's like in her early twenties, like she, but she's so talented that I can't wait to work for, with her for book two. For book two, yeah, that's amazing. Um, let's see if I can find the other page here. Who is your biggest inspiration? That's a tough, like as an author inspiration, like for writing. Yeah. I had stopped reading and writing, you know, like I said, kids work, 
everything kind of got in the way and I discovered an Australian author named Lynette Nooney. She has, um, she's kind of, she does young adult uh, fantasy and it, it was a series called the Acarne series and there's like five in the book. And I just happened to find, she is free on Audible and I like to listen to Audible in the car when I'm in like in the pickup line, picking up my kids. Yeah, and I, I just was sucked into this world and it just rejuvenated my love of reading. And then I was like, you know what? I, I think I can do this. I think I can write. So she kind of inspired me to get back into the game with just with reading and writing. That's amazing. And speaking of Audible, do you have any plans to produce these, uh, this series in Audible? I would love to, absolutely. It's a process <laughs> from what I understand. Yeah. Okay, that's really great. What tools do you use to help you when you're writing? Do you have any specific writing tools that aid you? Um, I'm, I use good old fashioned Microsoft Word mm -hmm. and Word will read it back to you, which I yeah. love. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how many drafts I had already written before I discovered that little tidbit. Oh, it makes it so much easier to catch. Oh, wow, that was wrong. <laughs> does like because you're reading and you know what it's supposed to say so you automatically you know your brain is like oh yeah that's what it says it doesn't yeah. you know? um also i have got these little reference books off of the uh, amazon for like five dollars a piece like they're just tiny tiny but it's like a thousand character reactions or you know helpful adjectives or strong verbs because my editor's always coming back you need a verb here <laughs> so. oh, great i might have to look into those <laughs> yeah they were like five dollars a piece and they're so small and just you flip through and find what you need i love them yeah yeah that's amazing um on a typical day how much time do you spend writing um it depends when my kids are in school i treat it as a full-time job because I'm, I work at home anyway, and my hypnotherapy practice, I do everything through Zoom. Mm -hmm. So if I don't have a client, then I just come home, make my coffee after dropping them off, and I work until I have to go pick them up. Oh, okay. That's awesome. In your opinion, what are the most important elements of good writing? I don't know. I'm still learning. <laughs> um, trust your gut. I mean, if you have a story, don't worry about what everybody else is going to think, because that's why we have editors. Just get it out and do you. I mean, don't worry about what everybody's going to think. If it's something you feel passionate about or you feel called to do, do it. Don't worry about the writing aspect because again, everybody, I think everybody should invest in an editor. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dyslexic author here, editors. <laughs> they might have to hate working with me, but I definitely need them, you know. Oh, I kept apologizing to mine. I'm like, I'm sorry, like I kept asking questions. <laughs> yeah. But it was my first book and she is a published author and very understanding, so. That's great. What is your favorite underappreciated novel do you think that you would come across as a reader? <laughs> there's, again, there's so many. <laughs> Especially for indie authors, it's hard for them to get it in is. front of It is. Um, my friend C.L. Ledford, her book right there, Raising the Stakes, yeah. um, is relatively new. Uh, and I think it is fantastic. It's her, she was, she did a bunch of shifter romances and not a bunch, but that was her thing. And then this is her, her venturing into darker mafia romance. And I loved it. That's great. Not that I it's love underrated, it. but I think it could definitely get, you know, you can never have too many readers, right? No, no, you can't have too many. Um, what does literary success mean for you? Like, to me, 
I just wanted to write this story because I've been aching to write, right? And for me, as long as as long as somebody reads the book, finds it valuable, and escapes into re a different reality, that's success. But um, to others, it might be like, let me get to be bestseller. You know, like for you, what is a successful literary process? Honestly, the fact that I. I did it. The fact that I have a published novel, I'm going yeah. to be 47 on next Friday, a week from today. I'll be 47 years old, mid yeah. midlife, you know, and I'm just now, you know, um, publishing my first book. So yeah. if anybody can take inspiration in that and realize that it's never too late to accomplish mm -hmm. your dream, and if they love my book, that to me is all I need. Even if it's just one person that picks up my book and gets inspired and they yeah. fall in love with it, I will have accomplished whatever I need to accomplish. Exactly, that's kind of where Would I'm I want to be rich? Absolutely, who's gonna say no to that? Famous, <laughs> I, eh, I don't know if I wanna be famous. Sure, but you know, I, I love the fact that I have a handful of people that read the book and they're just like, wow, we really like this series, so. Exactly, that would make me very happy. Same. I think a lot of I think a lot of authors, especially independent authors, feel the same way because it's about achieving the goal of becoming published. And you know, don't do it to become rich. Let me tell you. No, no the I don't. Thirty think cents I make off the book is not good. You know. No, it's definitely a labor of love. Yes. Um, I want to see. I had I had a couple more questions. Please. I think we've had, I think you've answered most of my questions. So are you having a launch party? Are you having a uh, celebration for when your book is launched? No? <laughs> no. <laughs> I am going to a launch party tomorrow though, oddly enough, but it's not for my book. <laughs> um, I'm going to interview you while I do a sip and paint class and then during that interview we will be giving away a copy of your book a signed copy of your book to one yes. of the um i'm going to do that on my facebook page just because it's easier for me with um inviting you on and, and painting <laughs> um it'll I be might... my first time live on facebook so <laughs> yeah yeah so uh if anybody wants to join us uh we can make a post and make links for that like right now i did this this painting last time it was for a, a young adult author who wrote a book about I so pretty. thank you she wrote a book about talent in the tree so i tried to like theme them on the cover a little bit so for you, we're going to do like this Excalibur dragon type thing. I know. I loved that. I can't wait. Mine will not look anything like that. I'll tell you that now. Like, I don't even, you know, I'll you attempt to paint it, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> that's the fun part. If I could get people to paint along with me and then like tag us in the pictures afterwards, that's what makes it fun because they just turn out all kinds of ways. But <laughs> I'm really looking forward to doing that. So we get to, we get to, uh, actually be able to give out the book and um then we're going to talk some more about it uh is there anything that you want us to know about your story about um uh, elizabeth the main character um anything at all that i haven't asked you um since it is like the first book it is like i said it's very young adult right now but it's because it's the first book and she's just now these people are coming into her world the series very well may get darker and there may even be spice later on i don't know <laughs> it's possible <laughs> i have not 100 percent made up my mind if i want to have spice in the book or if i want to offer that as a separate chapter okay. we'll see how that goes but this is still very light but it's the war is coming. It's going to get a little darker. Okay. So what would be your target audience? Would it be like um, spicier adults or the new age? 
Um, I would say the new age, young adult, or not necessarily young adult, but new adult, I think is what it's called because she's in her twenties in the book. She's not a teenager. Um, but she's kind of comes off a little young because she lived a very sheltered life. Mm -hmm. And this is all new to her. She did not know any of this existed. This is a whole new world. Like it was kept hidden from her, even though her family, her grandmother knew that she was going to have this magic and these powers, but things happened. Her you find out in the pro prologue that her father goes missing. And so she's raised without, she never knew her mother. So she's just raised by her grandmother and who kept all this from her. So she's learning a lot in the first book. So she yeah. comes off as a little, a little <laughs> immature, you know, but it's because it's the first book. Like she's alone and people leave her because her parents ended up disappearing. Okay. So there's trauma. And she, had, she had the love of her life when she was a teenager and he was taken away from her. So she feels like everybody has, that's come into her life that she cares about has left her. Her her grandmother is a world renowned archaeologist and so was her father so she traveled she had tutors she yeah. really and then she she did go to college but even in college she still felt kind of like a fish out of water like she's you know <laughs> yeah i've been there <laughs> <laughs> um, i think a lot of readers can relate to that uh let me see other thing what are the values that matter most to you in life like charity highlighting awareness that are close to your heart like in, in your bio you said that you have a child who has food allergies so that is um a huge part of my life and because of that she was two when she had her uh thankfully one and only reaction I was a stay at home mom. I had a two year old and my son was week, days, I'm sorry, days away from turning one. I was home alone. She had a reaction. Her allergist or her pediatrician told me to hang up and call 911 to get her to the hospital. Like I said, she was only two at the time, so she couldn't even talk. Uh, and I, I felt very alone. So I have really advocated and really tried to reach out to others so they don't have to feel that way. Uh, she had uh, sesame is one of her allergies. So I worked with legislation, sending letters to local congressmen to get that passed. So sesame as of 2023 is a the ninth allergy that allergen that is required to be labeled. Yeah. So I work with my the school to make sure the schools are um, educated and what they need to do for her, her teachers. You know, I do um for her she's 10 now so she can start to advocate for herself she knows to ask you know if food is safe for her she's learning to read um the labels but it's very important that people understand and you know don't don't it's a very serious condition it's it can be potentially life-threatening so i do take that very seriously oh yeah so. yes. <laughs> i i went to see um my niece she's in oklahoma and uh her little half sister had food allergies to nuts and uh, so i had all three of my nieces in the back of my jeep and we went to go pick up one who was at work she worked at the coffee shop and she got one of those school chocolate school chocolate bars you know they sell for char charities or raise money for band or something and she read the back of it and didn't see that it had any um chocolate or peanuts in it so she gave it to a little girl and in the back of my Jeep. She's having an allergic reaction <laughs> to it the is food allergy. Those terrifying yeah. things. It was so scary. And I'm like calling mom and dad, what do I do? You know, and um, she has a she has a sensitivity. That's, so it made her miserable. She was really, but you know, I, I can. But she didn't need to be epi, so that's good. Yeah, my she daughter, is. she's. My daughter's tree nuts and sesame, and she does not go anywhere without an EpiPen. Yeah. And she has, she has to carry one at school. The school has one in the nurses' station, and they mm -hmm. have one in her classroom. Thankfully, knock on something, we have never had to use it, and oh, we've been so doing this for eight years now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that I mean, that is some. Um, I'm proud of you. You went and legislated and advocated for your daughter. That's amazing. So. And hey, you gotta good. do what you gotta do for your kids. Wow. I, have <laughs> I see Miss Ledford is in the comments. Ledford, yeah. we were just talking about your book. 
Um, I am going to have boxes. Yes, I'm going to have PR boxes that I'm going to be sending out to influencers. I'll be have, um, I need to get that, the sign up sheet. So if people want, yes, your book, Raising yeah. the Stakes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I am going to be looking for influencers that want to have a PR box, you know, do the whole unboxing. And then I'm also going to have two PR boxes that I'm doing shmiveaways for one for early release or pre-order so if anybody pre-orders my book send me a copy let me see the screenshot and you get put in the drawing for my my box and for my arc readers that are and even any honestly arc readers and anybody that does like early day review so reviews and that's going to go to like september 1st so if you do a review on my book shoot me and i will put you in for that drawing oh well, how sweet that's a good idea <laughs> that's great pr boxes and you you've got arc readers and uh so you're just gonna put some look for sign up forms where can people for the influencers for influencers for influencers okay I, so if anybody wants an arc i still i i still have that open too that's in my profile um that for some reason on this app it doesn't let you go in through your link tree so if you're trying to do it and you want an ARC, just shoot me an email. I'll send it to you. So you're very open to receiving messages. You've got oh, yes. your ARC. You're going to do Etsy for your sign books. And then you're going to have these forms for, OK, that's great. And um, what would I suggest? Anybody who is on my page, as always, any featured author I interview or talk to, I ask that you like and follow them. Put them to your TBR if you don't have time to read them right now. And uh, when you do get a chance, please remember to leave reviews. Yes, <laughs> reviews are so important. Yeah. I also do blind date with a book giveaway. So when your book becomes live, I'll probably buy it and then I'll, I'll wrap it up at some point. Like, like this, my next one's going to be a paranormal mystery. Okay, look how nice you wrap them. See, you guys that can wrap real nice and pretty, you need to do a, do a class online on how to wrap these books. I'm yeah, just I YouTube it to learn. It took, I, I was like, husband, help me. Because <laughs> we couldn't figure it out. But we figured it out. And I'm going to check out your author, uh, C.L. Ledford. And, yes. Uh, that book, too, because... Raising the something. Stakes. Raising I'll show it to you. It's a gorgeous cover. And I can See, I'll correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't you design this cover or? Oh, look how pretty. I like it. So the, you're, you're, you're transitioning from Shifter Wolf to Mafia, which is cool. And you, do you have a copy of your book? Would you like to hold it up and show everybody your book? It still has the whole, you know, the thing in front of it. That won't be there when you get it. Yeah. Okay. So see the cool. back. Oh, so pretty. It is pretty. And when you open it, like my, she did beautiful on the inside as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's gorgeous. So you're, you're, you had somebody format it for you or? My um, cover art, my cover artist did my formatting as well. <laughs> I the cover artist. <laughs> and then that's I just cool. had these done. These are the characters. Oh, that's awesome. These yeah. are the. I'm going to be going to in November. I have a signing event that I'm going to, and these are going to be the freebies on the table that has, you know, the QR code. But that's the character Shane Riker and uh, Elizabeth. Okay, so it's kind of like a like a, a love triangle ish. Yes, <laughs> it's kind of like Twilight. she's she's got she like attracts people like. Flies. Oh. And she's so clueless about it, she doesn't even realize it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, it's been so great talking to you and, and having getting to know you and your book, and I can't wait for it to come out. Um, I can't wait for us to do the Sip and Paint on Facebook where we get to give your book away. Yes, and you will be joining me on my live, I believe it's next month, to discuss your book. Yeah, we're going to have so much fun. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so I'm excited about that as well. Uh, authors should support one another. And this, and this is the highlight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because we're all avid readers. And uh, 
we all want to see each other succeed. That's why when I'm interviewing for my book, I don't mind giving a shout out to my peeps, you know? (laughs) Well, if I'm not friends with you, uh, C.L. Ledford author, I will will tag on you and, and become friends with you and then check your books out too. So I always like getting to know new authors. <laughs> she has been instrumental in helping me. Anytime I have a question, I'm like, Ledford, what do I do here? So oh. she has been very helpful for me. <laughs> As it should be, because that's good karma too, you know, and, and we should just reach out for each other. A hundred percent. For sure, for sure. So this has been very fun and I'm excited and I hope anybody who is like wanting to see a new age, modern day version of um, Excalibur, Arthur, Dragons, Merlin, that kind of thing. Where a woman's got the sword. So, you know, you can't go wrong with that. (laughs) There's also dragons, there's elves, there's a hot Santa Claus that used to be a knight of the round table. Like this book's got a little bit of everything in it. (laughs) <laughs> you had me at hot santa that used to be a knight so <laughs> right? you wield the sword himself <laughs> right <laughs> i'm down <laughs> for sure for sure so i appreciate you i'm gonna um not take any more of your time tonight but um, thank you so much Tanya. it was great talking to- it is it is tanya right or yeah, is it tanya all- but you know, I'm down in the South too, so people like to just insist on Tanya. It, it doesn't really matter, but I I was raised with Tanya. <laughs> it is Tanya, okay. See Mike, I have a cousin who spells it the same way and she is a Tanya, yeah. so. Well, that's, uh, my mom and dad called me Tanya. I was raised in California and then I moved to Texas when I was 19 and everybody here is like, it's Tanya. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with it. <laughs> I will call you Tanya. It's okay. I just want to make sure, like, I call you the right name. Oh, I'm so terrible with names. I always have to ask. I always have to ask. Me like, too. <laughs> I used to work. I used to work in a, in in the prison as a correctional officer, and when I had to do call call out for the names, <laughs> oh, I butchered so many names. When I do my book reviews, I always apologize to the author. I'm like, I know I'm butchering this name, but this is how it bears in my head. <laughs> it's it. Well, you know, we do the best we can. And then sometimes I read things and I'm pronouncing it a certain way in my head and it's not even how. I can't tell you how many books I read from Cheryl and Kenyon with the Asheron character. And I was, I was calling him Archeon or whatever. <laughs> Instead of Asher, <laughs> I didn't find out until years later I was doing it all wrong. I have an embarrassing <laughs> confession. I have not read a single one of her books, and I did not realize she was such a huge author. I am involved with a little author event called Chaos and Book Talk that we're hosting in oh, South yeah, Carolina. So, you know, if you're ever in that area, next year it's a two-day event, but she is going to be there this year and everybody's all very excited about it because she's, and I'm like, how have, I love vampires. How have I missed her and not read any of her books? Yeah. How I got introduced to her was, I was reading, because of my dyslexia, I had such a hard time reading. And my um, daughter started reading Twilight, my two younger daughters, back when it was coming out. Of course, they're like, oh, you know, you got to go to the store and get this book and we read it. And uh, I was like, I'll, I will try my best to read it with you guys because she was so wanting me to read it. And then when I started reading it, I realized I was reading it fluently, you know, so uh, I got into it. And I started reading all these young adult books with my kids. And I had a girlfriend that would read them with me, too, because we all had kids about that age. Well... I went into the library and I and I and my girlfriend she says or not the library Barnes and Noble. My girlfriend says, "Honey, if you like Twilight, you're gonna love this." And she handed me like a Christine Feehan and then a Sherilyn Kenyon, and that's how I got obsessed with reading the spicy romance. I have so, till November. I have to read at least one of her books by November, so I can yeah. be knowledgeable when I meet this woman. <laughs> yeah, they have. She has the Dark Hunter series, and then she also has kind of like this sci-fi legacy um space type series that's pretty cool 
I'm here for it all. If it's not real, you know, I like the fantasy. I don't care if it's sci-fi, fantasy, magical, whatever. I'm here for it. As long as it's not like real, you know, I don't watch the news. You know, I don't want to read about, you know, stuff that can be possible. I like to let my imagination and, you know, go. <laughs> Reality right now can be really tough. So exactly, getting... give me my fantasy. Exactly. exactly. So we're right there. But it's been so fun chatting with you. It and has been so much fun. Thank you so much. And I'm so excited about your book. I'm going to promote it. I'm going to read it. And then I'll Thank let you, you know. I already pre ordered it. And um, I'm just going to tell all my readers and reader friends to check out your story. They I all appreciate like it. it. I'm a baby. I'm an infant author. This is my debut. So yeah, it's a big deal. It's a very big deal. And I'm very happy that I got to um, talk about it with you tonight. And you're my first interview. So you know, <laughs> well, I hope it went okay. <laughs> it did. I had fun. Yeah, yeah. All right. So if anybody wants to connect with you, it, it could be direct message through TikTok or what are your other platforms? I am on TikTok. I am on um, the gram. I am on the book of faces. I am on clapper. I do have a website though. I'll be honest. I don't check it very often, but you can shoot me an email at Jeanette at Jeanette queen.com. You know, I'm open. Okay. Sounds great. So there you have it, everybody. Please like follow, put her on your to be right now. Do you have a Goodreads account and an author account on Amazon? I think you do. Cause I follow I you on Amazon. Do. Yes. I okay. think I have to add like my bio to one of them. Like it's still, the Goodreads is still like in review, mm -hmm. but my books are on there. So my books, you can review them and check them out. So. Okay. So those would be great places to look up Jeanette the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette T. Queen, The Last Pen Dragon. And it's no, book one in a series. So yes. um, new age 17 to 18 and up would be a great, uh, target audience. So. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. You have a good rest of your night and, and, and message Thank me. Thank you. Have you the same. Have a good one. Bye, Bye for now.